Hi, and thank you for being here. I'm Emma Rainville, and today we're going to be talking about ways in implementing an operating system can help you get the best of your business while laying grounds for scaling in a more efficient way. If you're not familiar with operating systems, don't worry, we are. We're experts at it. I'm one of the co-founders and managing partners of Shockwave Solutions, a consultancy firm that which provides COO services for businesses in the e-commerce and direct response marketing space. We're going to go a little bit more in depth later on in the discussion, but on a basic level, a business operating system is a series of processes and practices used throughout your company. In other words, it's how your company approaches, approaches tasks and challenges from day-to-day -day basics to one-off situations. While every company has a culture all of its own, an operating system isn't just a loose set of ideas. It's something that takes time and effort to create. It's something with clear rules where they're followed at all levels within your business. And when used correctly is one of the most useful tools your company can use to scale. In this presentation, I'll be talking about a bunch of different operating systems in general, though most of my specific points will cover specifically EOS or entrepreneur, entrepreneur's operating system. There are pros and cons to every operating system and EOS isn't always gonna be the right fit for everyone. As it so often is the case, you're going to see the best results when you take the time to find the system that works best for your specific requirements and needs. In my career, I've worked with hundreds of different businesses from startups to internationally recognized companies. Along with the work that I do to improve their profitability, one of the most important promises that I make my clients is that I'll improve their internal organization Typically, that starts with implementing an operating system or reviewing their current system and making sure that that's working efficiently and effectively for them. Having an operating system is essential for companies at any scale, and achieving eight-figure revenue is far from a guarantee that your business is fully functioning or that it's functioning healthily. In fact, the larger a business gets, the harder it is to scale when you don't have a proper operational system in place. As a correctly implemented operating system should have some impact on practically everything you do, it's so important to bring in a system as early as possible so that it can grow with your business instead of being patched in later. Companies without an effective operating system don't even know what they're missing. Without an effectively implemented operating system, businesses face a wide variety of problems. Let's cover a few of the most common issues that we see. First, the most obvious reason for implementing an operating system, it helps keep your company under constant control. Without an operating system, businesses don't have any formal way to organize with everything being processed around informal undocumented processes, there's chaos. Without agreed upon written processes, you don't have a management system. You've got a series of individual events. This is going to slow you down, result in unequal outcomes, and often create unnecessary tension for employees. Similarly, without an operating system in place, you'll also find yourself missing a clear hierarchy of responsibility with employees unsure of where to turn when they need assistance with business critical tasks. Having a fully formed accountability chart where everyone knows what they're responsible for and everyone knows who to hold accountable for what bucket or box is game-changing for businesses. Not all the issues caused by unimplemented operating systems are obvious. Without a system for tracking process and knowledge, all that information ends up being employee-specific rather than company-wide, causing major problems for scaling, development, and turnover. When businesses reach a large scale without implementing an operating system, they encounter additional problems. Employees in large businesses without operating systems often end up without any important tasks, finding themselves confined to busy work and unimportant tasks. This isn't just a waste of time and money for the company, it's a waste of the employee's time as well. Later on, I'm gonna be talking to some of the prob problems that businesses experience when they incorrectly implement operating systems, but let's stay on with the positives for the moment. Along with resolving the problems we've just discussed, Implementing an operating system can offer certain additional benefits and advantages. 
Later on, I'll be going into detail about the efficiency benefits offered by operating systems along with opportunities they offer for scaling. As a starting point, let's consider the impact that an operating system has for employees. Because it's not necessarily obvious for most of this presentation, I'm gonna be talking about how operating systems help you as an entrepreneur or how they benefit your business as a whole. One of the great things about implementing an operating system is that the benefits go so much further than you may think. As I've said, operating systems help minimize the amount of wasted hours and frustration for employees. It's far more significant than you might think. If you look into the statistics, being disengaged in one, uh, is one of the biggest reasons why people leave their jobs. Gallup polling founded that engaged employees were far less likely to leave their jobs, that they were almost 50% more likely to be adaptable, that they were a lot more likely to rate themselves high in performance. The statistics keep going, but the point is clear. Introducing an operating system benefits both you and your employees and your business. When everyone's on the same page, when everyone understands the vision, when everyone understands the focus, the values, and the goals, everyone can work together as a team and what they can accomplish is far greater. Again, this is far from the only positive. Any operating system makes it far easier to track company-wide performance through the use of constant regularly tracked KPIs and metrics. This benefits you as the owner while getting your key employees invested in overall business performance, improving performance and engagement. Not every operating system is built in the same way and different businesses need to prioritize different features and structures. Some operating systems prioritize the individual while others focus on the company first and foremost. Is your business's success dependent on one single employee or a wider set of responsibilities and tasks? Different systems also target different lengths of time. Are you thinking about your company in the short term or do you make your plans multiple years ahead? Some operating systems are sector specific, designed to support success within a specific part of the market. You're likely familiar with features and terminology from some of those operating systems like Kazan, Scrum, Spirit. However, the fact that a sector-specific operating system exists doesn't necessarily make it the best option for you. Ultimately, the best choice of operating systems for your business depends on your specific requirements. Let's go through a few of the more common options. Probably the best known operating system is the Toyota production system. The approach used by the car manufacturer Toyota was to minimize waste by implementing just-in-time design. By developing this system, Toyota scaled from practically zero sales in the early 50s to being one of the world's best-known car makers, showing the sheer importance of getting the right operating system. The more general applicable operating systems, Lean Six Sigma, is similarly designed to reduce waste in a way that is an industrial industrially linked to manufacturing forms. In the modern day, you'll find a huge variety of modern operating systems aiming to support businesses in previously unachievable ways. For more of my clients, however, I recommend a modified version of Entrepreneurial Operating System or EOS because we found great success in direct response marketing and e-commerce. You generally are working with entrepreneurs and more specifically entrepreneur integrated relationships. So we've just gotten a lot of success using EOS. As the name suggests, EOS is designed for entrepreneurs and it is meant to adjust to the challenges that companies run by entrepreneurs generally face. EOS is broken down in six components. Those are vision, the overall plan and direction for the company and how to realize it. When your people truly know what your vision is and what you see, it's game changing. It really is. And most entrepreneurs really feel like they've explored the vision with their personnel and they believe that everybody in the company knows the vision. But time and time again, Travis and I and our team will come in to a company and not one single employee can give me the same answer on what the vision for the company is. 
generally when we talk to the entrepreneur, they even give us four or five different answers over the span of six weeks. It's important to get your vision down and make sure everybody understands it. Next is people, the individuals who make up your team and how to get the best results from them. And that, again, when you're making your vision, one of the things that we do uh, is called a VTO and EOS, and we create a um, core values section of the vision. And so making, we have, making sure we have the right people in the right seats that get the job, that want the job and have the capacity to do the job and match our core values is so important. Issues, how we track and resolve the issues that our companies face. This is such a key component for us, even within Shockwave, we utilize EOS. And when we're able to go through the issues as a team and discuss them, maybe my data analyst is having an issue that my tech person has a fresh set of eyes on, but you would never think that those two people would need to talk about issues together, sitting down, all of us together, going through all of the issues that we're having or that we're facing and talking out how we solve them and getting everyone's ideas is a phenomenal way to move forward. Data, tracking company performance with constant objective numbers, consistent objective numbers. So again, with EOS, we utilize something called a scorecard and we're looking for specific KPIs and everyone has at least one KPI, one to three generally on their performance. So in a quick snapshot every week during our L10 meeting, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but every week when we have that L10 meeting, we're able to review that scorecard together in five seconds, and we can see where there are problems and there are issues that we need to talk about because we're not hitting our numbers. It gives us a really uh, bird's eye view of our entire business. Process. Building the processes that your company follows at all times. And this is the hardest part, I think, for a lot of our entrepreneurs, because we're building a process that even they have to follow. If employee A, B, and C has to follow it, the owner has to follow it as well. And so making sure that we build things that everybody's comfortable with, that fits in with our core values and fits in with our vision, and then we can repeat and repeat and repeat over and over again is absolutely game-changing. Traction. The work it takes to make your vision into real achievable set of goals, in my view, EOS is almost always an ideal match for entrepreneurs. It's a way to remove common shortcomings for entrepreneurs and their teams while enabling all employees to work to their full potential. Most businesses run by an entrepreneur definitely have those day-to-day -day frustrations that entrepreneurs can bring to the table. Um, entrepreneurs with an, a good operating system are able to spend more time doing what they do best, staying in their zone of genius, while their employees can avoid the frustrations and difficulties that can occur with an entrepreneurial organization without it. The employees can then go stay in their zone of genius because they understand the vision, because they understand the goals, because they have everybody's uh, rowing in the same direction. I love to use that analogy all the time. Everybody's in you know, their canoe and everybody has a map and everybody's rowing in the same direction. They're able to make good informed decisions. So whether you pick EOS or another operating system, integrating the system takes some work. Operating systems aren't just for show or something to boast about having. They need to be foundational um, and need to be a big part of your business. And implementing them effectively often requires external experience. The EOS process shown on this slide is a fairly standard example of how in-depth integration needs to be. For manufacturing focused operating systems, implementation is necessary and far more complex. Just to give a brief cover of the stages of EOS process, everything starts with a 90 minute meeting. This introduces the system, explain how it helps and gets everyone familiar with the key terminology. From there, a focus day sets individual and team-wide responsibilities and metrics, followed by two vision meetings, at least two vision meetings, where we are able to build the VTO. This will start turning the entrepreneur's vision into a manageable and realistic set of targets. Once implemented, the EOS process revisits the key principles of the operating system quarterly 
and on one more in-depth basis annually. This ensures that the company is still operating along the lines it set out to by in implementing the operating system. While integrating an operating system effectively takes time, there's usually an immediate payoff. Taking the time to ensure that everyone is on the same page means that your whole team is working towards a common goal. That may seem to be a given, but when you've worked with as many companies as I have, you know how rare it is for the company's entire key staff to know what they're really working towards. By implementing regular meetings for all key employees, entrepreneurs are able to regularly check that everyone understands exactly what's going on within the company. These meetings also give all key staff members the ability to discuss their progress, key tasks, and talk through any factors holding them back from the accomplishing goals. Again, this is far more meaningful of an upgrade than most people think. Internal communication is shockingly common problem for businesses. And having regular meetings where attendees are encouraged to participate and pretty much forced to participate helps to resolve the issue of the communication. In so many cases, some member of staff knows about a potential issue before it develops into a business-wide crisis. Giving everyone an opportunity to talk through everything happening in their role means identifying and solving problems before their fires or big problems. Instead of waiting for an emergency, we're dealing with them the second they occur and the whole company knows about it. All of your key players are there and can discuss it. In EOS, these meetings are referred to as level 10 or L10 meetings. In other operating systems, they ha may have some form of a weekly or biweekly meeting. They might not. It is a imperative thing that you do that you construct a level 10 meeting no matter what you incorporate into your business. So the way an L10 meeting works, and the reason why we call it a level 10 is at the end of every meeting, every single person on that call, we do a call, a Zoom call. You can have it in your conference room if you're in office, but everybody at the end of the meeting rates the meeting and they're rating it from one to 10 on how good of a use their time was during that meeting. So based upon what you know, I pay you and what you need to uh, produce for that salary, how effective were you in this meeting and how effective was this meeting for you from one to 10? We're making sure that A, we're running the meetings effectively and we're not wasting time. There's tons of memes out there where it's like, this meeting should have been an email. Um, what you want is 90 effective minutes that always start on time, always end on time, always stay on an agenda and are rapid fire. So we're just every single week or every other week, depending on your company size and your company needs, everyone's staying on the same page. So regardless of what you do past today, if you do nothing else but implement that 90 minute rapid fire me meeting where everyone gets to just review their um their department, you, that'll be game-changing for your company alone. In a longer-term view, implementing an operating system offers far more benefits. A consistent process is an effective, optimizable process. Carrying out a task in a different way every time is a drain on resources, resulting in uneven results. Creating standard operating procedures, or SOPs, should always be a major focus when implementing an operating system. SOPs mean that tasks are always done the same way every time with everything standardized. It's a lot easier to notice and implement potential improvements, whether that means combing steps, slightly tweaking tasks, expanding the scope. These are game changing for a business. Even if you think everybody knows the process, if it's not written, it's not being followed. Having a full set of SOPs in place always makes training more efficient. You don't have to explain each task in a time-consuming way if your SOPs are designed well. They'll give new employees the context and information they need about the tasks that they'll be carrying out. And as I've said, operating systems start off with getting everyone on the same page and minimizing busy work. This is a major gain for your efficiency 
when handled effectively. Your management team can ensure that everyone you employ is using their time in a useful, important, and rewarding way, minimizing turnover while improving business success. With a clear-cut metric introduced by your operating system, you're giving everyone a full understanding of how they're performing and how their company is doing overall. Seeing the results of your work is an incredible motivator. So you're going to see at least some of your employees start to go above and beyond for even better results. Everything monitored is improved. I say this all the time. Everything monitored is improved. So when you're monitoring everything, and if every single week I get to show you my scorecard and you can see all the great work I'm doing, I'm just going to be fed to do better and better. Similarly, anyone who is not hitting their targets and maybe isn't in the right seat, it'll be blatantly obvious to you a lot sooner. It's also going to make it easier for you to determine what you need to improve within your system, whether that means seeing departments that consistently fail to hit targets, understanding the impact that tests had for your bottom line or similar. By creating a clear hierarchy, your operating system gives your employees information about where to go with issues or questions without an operating system in place. Employees often don't know how to get an answer to the questions they have while being able to refer to the hierarchy lets employees perform in a far more efficient, self-driven way. The benefits of implementing an operating system aren't just limited to the near future. Your system should be invaluable resource when you plan and scale your business to the next level. Because of the improvements for efficiency that we've already discussed, you're resolving one of the most common scaling issues, building an effective company at a small scale rather than attempting to retrofit efficiency into a larger business. More importantly, however, your operating system should make it vastly easier to plan your future. Instead of building a vague vision of how you want your company to look a few years down the line, your operating system gives you the ability to plan for the future in a realistic fashion, set clear time-limited goals for growth, and understand what needs to be accomplished so that these goals can be achieved in a time frame that you've set. In short, operating system helps you get your business working as well as possible at your current scale. Then gives you the tools that you need to carefully plan it out, the scaling process. There are two common problems with operating systems that we see at Shockwave all the time. Entrepreneurs like to mix and match them. Well, I read Double Double and I read Traction, so let me have half of this one and half of that one. Or, you know, the core values aren't really important. Neither is the core focus. Let's just worry about years one, three, and 10. It's very important to stick with what's tried and true. Operating systems are designed to be followed. Taking some elements from one and some good practice from another may seem like a great idea, but in practice, it causes some serious problems and confusion. Keep it simple and you'll find yourself in a better place, especially when bringing in new employees. When you set up practices for your business, you need to ensure that you're actually following these practices, not just writing up some SOPs. You should regularly check that the processes you established are being followed or you won't be getting the full benefits of the system. You should also be regularly checking those processes and seeing where you could tweak them to make them better. To wrap things up, there's one more point worth considering when picking an operating system. You need a system that's capable of adjusting and scaling with your business. You might start off by including your full team in all your regular meetings or having a training plan that includes dedicated hands-on time with all the directors. As you scale, the process can't be followed to the same degree. A 100-person meeting isn't usually as effective as a 10-person one. And there are generally more pressing tasks for you as a business owner than training a whole new low-level employee. You're going to need to adjust your processes over time. They can't be static. 
They're not just there for the sake of being there. They're an incredible, powerful tool for improving and scaling your business, and they need to grow along with your company. With EOS, step one would be creating your vision or your VTO, creating your core values, your core focus, your three uniques, your guarantee, your proven process. And then the part that I think is most important to really spend time on is your 10-year target. Where do you see this all being in 10 years? Make sure it matches with the goals for your personal life. If you plan on working two hours a day, scaling your company 10 times, you know, 10 extra company every year, and want a lake house and start a family, those things probably aren't going to match if you want to continue to be the CEO and running the company. So making sure that your 10-year target kind of matches with what your personal life goals are. The second one is a three-year picture. Where do you see this all in three years? What are some major accomplishments and goals you want to have? How many products do you want to sell? How many salespeople do you want um, to have? Just putting a few metrics out there so that you know where you want to be three years from now. And then finally, having your one-year goals. And so those are, we're going to do this this year. This is what we're going to do. This is how much revenue we're going to make. This is how much profit we're going to have. And here are the three to 10 milestones that we are going to make this year. And so once you've got your VTO in place, you can share that with everyone on your team. And now, now you've got all your canoes filled with the right people and they're all rowing in the same direction. Next, we're going to implement the L10 meeting so that we can make sure that we're spending 90 minutes week after week or biweekly, if that's what your business needs, only you can determine that. But we're spending 90 solid minutes on, we have a quick, everyone goes around and talks about personal or professional good news, rapid fire, super quick, just so we can have a little bit of normalcy and bonding. Then we're going to go straight into our scorecard. What are your KPIs? What do we need to talk about? What needs to go on the issue list? Who's having problems? Who's not? Next, we're going to do our rocks review. And our rocks I'll talk about in just a second. But those are the tasks that you're going to give each of your key employees that are going to get us to our goals. And once we review that, we review our to-do list, which was usually generated or created during the issues portion of the week, uh, the meeting before. Once we are finished doing the to-dos, we do department headlines. Again, rapid fire. Here's what our department is working on. Here's our accomplishments. Here's what we need help with this week. And then finally, the majority of your meeting, about 60 minutes, is going to be spent on the issues. The issues that you created, going over people's rocks that they're not on track for, going over the to-do list, why didn't you get this done? We get our to-do list done 90% week after week because there are no excuses. Um, And so when there are no excuses and we're holding each other accountable, only things that can't get done don't get done. Um, Any KPIs that are off go on the issues list and we're able as a team to go through them and discuss them weekly. Next, we are going to take those yearly goals that we created during the VTO, and we are going to make a quarterly plan. And we're going to do this every quarter. And so we're going to take our key employees, our team leads, or our department heads, executive team, and we're going to create key rocks that we need to do this quarter that brings us one quarter closer to our yearly goals. We want to make sure that we've kind of mapped out in our head where all of those goals for year one are going, um, what quarter we're going to work on them um, so that we can make sure that we hit them every year. You don't want to wait till Q4 to do a nine-month project. So making sure that we plan that out during that first quarterly meeting of the year is very important. Then we're going to take those rocks and we're going to set those rocks for our employees. We're going to review all employee KPIs on that quarterly meeting and make sure that the next quarter... Are the numbers that we're looking at still relevant? Are the goals still significant and make sense? Do we need to be looking at something else? Do we need to increase our goals? Do we need to take them back a little bit? We'll be looking at all of those things. As well as a people analyzer. People analyzer is your typical employee review. But what we're reviewing them on is the core values that we have set up during our VTO. 
So that is your quarterly meeting. That pretty much wraps it up. You're just going to just rinse and repeat from here. Each quarter, you'll have your meeting each week, your quarterly meeting. Each week, you'll have your L10. And every year, you'll revisit your VTO. What are our new 10-year target, three-year picture, and one-year goals? Where do we want to be? How do we want to be there? And how do we uh, make sure every single employee knows every single piece of this so that we can be successful? Um, if you'd like to learn more about EOS, I highly suggest reading a book called Traction written by Gino Wickman. It actually walks you through in a very textbook style how to implement EOS into your business. Alternatively, if you're not a textbook reader, um, most entrepreneurs are, but if you're not a textbook reader and you need a storyline, uh, Gino Wickman uh, wrote a book called Get a Grip. And it uses a company story on how they implemented EOS to make it a little bit more entertaining. So it's a little bit of an easier read if that's more your jam. Um, I'm Emma Rainville from Shockwave Solutions. Anna and Team Maxweb, thank you for having me. I hope you learned a little bit about operating systems. Um, and thank you so much.